This is the first part of the Design Wizard tutorial. This is our two span portal. Let's run the Design Wizard. File Quick Ports Wizards Design. These are the ultimate limit state combinations, and they've already been set up and checked by Input Wizard. Click Next. These are the serviceability limit states. That is to say, those combinations for which we require deflection checks. Click Next. This form is all about the in-plane stability of the frame. Uh, it's set up to check the frame using the Amplified Moments method. Once we've run Check Wizard, we'll know what the elastic critical load is, and therefore what the amplification factor should be. But for the moment, we'll assume that Lambda CR is greater than 10, and therefore the amplification factor is 1. Click Next. Use Elastic and Plastic Design. Click Next. This is the section shapes. We'll have UBs for all groups, except that the valley column here will be a UC. Click Next. Use the currently selected sections or start over. We'll select some new sections. Next. OK, that's selected some sections based on the capacity. And for now, that's the end of the first tutorial. In the next tutorial, we'll move on to the next form in the wizard and check the member stability and produce a final design. This is part two of the Design Wizard tutorial. Click Next. The program is now performing analyses, stability checks and capacity checks. You see down here it's building a list of alternative sections. Design Wizard each combination elastic minimum weight design and then if that fails it moves on to elastic plastic analysis. It's finished so I click OK. Now the program now is notifying me of quite a common problem. It's suggesting that I continue using only elastic design. The reason for this is that when I was using Input Wizard um, I wasn't particularly careful about the purlins. There is no purlin in the valley at the end of the haunch. And the purlin centers were actually quite wide. You could get this frame to work plastically, but you'd need additional lines of purlins. So I'm going to continue using only elastic design. Click OK. And now it's going to repeat that process, but just using elastic analysis. OK, it's finished. OK, so the top pane lists the various sections for the different groups. As we select, we can see them up here. And the bottom pane lists the alternative sections. We'll start selecting sections in the third tutorial. This is part three of the Design Wizard tutorial. I apologize for the sound in part two. Um, that's because Quickport was grabbing so much of the processor power that the recording software couldn't catch up. Let's select some sections. Currently in the Groups panel, the external columns are selected. You can see that here. And the alternative sections are listed here. So we'll scroll down till we find the first or lightest that's passed and we'll select that. And now for the rafters in span 1, 
40 for 39. Select. The rafters in span 2, which is the same size. Select. And for the valley column, a 203, 203 by 46, you see. And recheck. And now it's finished. I click OK. And we can see from this panel that all the sections have passed capacity and stability. And indeed, also passed with a deflection. And that concludes part three of the Design Wizard tutorial. This is the final part of the Design Wizard tutorial. We've got sections selected for each section group and each section passes capacity and stability. We can view the deflections by clicking here. We can see a very handy report detailing the results for each combination if we click here. This tells us the mass of the current frame. So all that remains now is to add the purlin stays and rail stays. I'll click next. The question is do you want to automatically add purlin and rail stays? Yes. Next. The program is now building tables of stability checks and performing a, a very special uh, optimization algorithm to add stays to the frame. It does this for every combination and will always add the minimum number of stays. So it's finished, we'll click next and finish. And there's our final frame. We can look at a true view and zoom in. We can see the stays here. We can look at the capacity and this drawing we can see the unity checks and we can look at the stability. We change combination by clicking here so we can see the stability for each combination. Go back to dead plus imposed These checks are shown in green because they've passed. If you want to see what one looks like that's failed, we'll remove a stay by clicking on the toggle stay button and clicking near a purlin. That removed the stay. And now we can see that the Annex G check is failed. Let's put it back. And that concludes the Design Wizard tutorial.